Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we come together to celebrate this first Sunday of Lent, a time in which we prepare to celebrate the great Paschal mystery, the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus we come before the Lord knowing that we are weak and that we are sinful. So let's ask the Lord now for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, The priest shall take the basket of first fruits from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God and you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number, and there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us, and laid upon us heart bondage. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and outstretched arm, with great terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with me, O Lord, when I am in distress. Be with me, O Lord, when I am in distress. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides in the shade of the Almighty, says to the Lord, My refuge, my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. Be with, be with me, O Lord, when I am distressed. distressed. Upon you no evil shall fall, no plague approach your tent. For you has he commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. Be, Be with, with me, me, O Lord, Lord when I am in distress. distress. They shall bear you upon their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. On the lion and the viper you will tread, and trample the young lion and the serpent. Be, Be with, with me, me, O Lord, Lord when I am in distress. distress. 
Since he clings to me in love, I will free him. Protect him, for he knows my name. When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. I will deliver him and give him glory. Be with me, O Lord, when I am in distress. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does the scripture say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For man believes with his heart and so is justified, and he confesses with his lips and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and bestows his riches upon all who call upon him. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit for forty days in the wilderness, tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing in those days, and when they were ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command the stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it shall all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will give his angels charge of you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. I have a friend who has a boat, and he's very excited when he goes to spend time on his boat. And he described recently how he decided, with another companion, to spend a night on this boat. And so they took this little boat out onto the sea, and eventually, as the sun began to set, his friend said to him, now we have to put the anchor down, and this is where we will be for the night. And he says he was just a little bit nervous because Even though the anchor was down, that boat tossed a little bit as it stood there. And he says from time to time he went to look overboard and check that that anchor was still down and had not come loose from the boat. 
and he describes how a big boat goes past them, one that probably didn't feel the movement of the sea. But as it passed them, this little boat rocks from side to side. And so he goes again to check the anchor. And so he didn't have a very good night's sleep because he spent most of the night just making sure that that anchor was still anchoring that boat. I wonder if this period of Lent is like that. It's a time for us to anchor or to re-anchor ourselves. We live on a sea in many ways. Life goes up and down, and sometimes we are tossed and turned, and sometimes it is calm. And during Lent, we're given an opportunity to re-anchor ourselves in the Lord. Lent is a period that invites us to find some steadiness on the sea of life. And the scriptures we hear on this first Sunday of Lent seem to me to be a roadmap or a strategy or perhaps even advice to help us to re-anchor ourselves in the Lord. They help us to steady ourselves. And I want to suggest to you this morning that there are three invitations that are put before us. The first one comes from that book of Deuteronomy. The religious and the social and the political life of Israel is in crisis. And in that small text we heard this morning from Deuteronomy, Israel is being called to renew themselves, to, so to speak, re-anchor themselves, to reform themselves so that they would get through the crisis they are experiencing. And they are given instructions as to how to do this. Moses instructs them to, first of all, recall the journey that they have made. He says, look and see how God has been faithful to you as you've made this journey. And the third thing he says to them is, take the first of your fruits and offer them to the Lord. The best fruits of the harvest were normally those that came first. And I wondered if in this time of Lent, we too are not being invited to look at our own journeys over the last year since we last celebrated the passion and the death and resurrection of Jesus. Take time in these days to look back at our own journeys. Take time to see how God has been faithful to us in the journey of the last year, perhaps in ways that we do not normally notice unless we step back and reflect. And I wonder in this time of Lent if we can offer the Lord those first fruits, those best part of ourselves, so that we can be re-anchored in God. Not the leftovers, not the parts of ourselves that we think are needing God at this time, but the whole of ourselves, the best of ourselves. Can we offer that to the Lord? The second invitation comes from that gospel that we heard from Luke. We're told that Jesus goes into the wilderness, or some translations say a desert. And a desert is a place of solitude. It's a place of minimal resources. It's a place that is hot. It's a place where you are exposed to the elements, maybe in a way that we are not normally exposed to the elements. It's a place where if we pay attention we come to see how fragile and yet how beautiful life can be. Little creatures that we know nothing about suddenly pop up in the desert from the sand. And so there's a beauty in the desert, but we know too that there is a fragility because of the scarcity. And Lent invites us to create our own wilderness, to create our own desert an intentional space, an intentional place of solitude. Lent invites us to practice solitude 
in a way maybe we don't normally practice solitude. Maybe to live more minimally, as we heard on Ash Wednesday, to go back to the practice of fasting, to expose ourselves to the elements of our own lives, perhaps the things that we don't normally want to look at, the fragility and also the beauty of our own lives, of our own beings, of the people that God has created when we look at ourselves in the mirror. Can you find a practice and a place of solitude during this Lent? Maybe try to live a life that is more minimal, more frugal? And can you really claim your own beauty and yet recognize your fragility? And the third and final invitation is simply the answer that Jesus gives to the tempter every time he speaks. Notice Jesus' response to Satan. All Jesus says when Satan offers him whatever he offers him is simply, it is written. It is written. He doesn't speak on his own behalf. He uses scripture to respond to Satan. He speaks directly to Satan using the authority of God's word. I wonder if there's an invitation for us during this time of Lent to spend time becoming more familiar with God's word. Generally, dare I say it, Catholics are not very familiar with the word of God. And I wonder if we've been invited to live more conscious of God's word. Dare I even suggest for Catholics to read God's Word in the Scriptures daily during this time of Lent. It's a wonderful opportunity to take something like Luke's Gospel and start reading from the beginning to the end and become familiar with that Word during these days of Lent. That somehow we become more conscious and allow the Word of God to expose to us who we are, and what God is calling us to be. I wonder in what way God is inviting you to re-anchor your own life in this time of Lent, to re-anchor your spirit, to find God in a way perhaps that you don't normally find the Lord. The choice is yours. So let's pray together now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's now bring our prayers, our needs, and the needs of our church and the world before God. For all the followers of Christ, that Lent may be a time of renewal and lead us all to a deeper and more authentic living of the Christian life. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For the grace to enter the wilderness of Lent that we would not be afraid to enter into a place of solitude, a place of minimal resources, so that we can focus on God alone during this time of Lent. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all in leadership. That they would resist the temptation to seek their own glory and seek instead to serve their brothers and sisters with noble and generous hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us. That Lent would foster in us a spirit of self-denial and make us, through this, more generous and loving towards others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us for a greater knowledge and dependence on God's Word. That during Lent we would intentionally deepen our knowledge of and live from God's Word in the Scriptures. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own intentions. Let us take a moment in silence to bring to the Lord what we seek in this time of Lent, the grace that we need now. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, with gratitude we thank you for this season of Lent. And we pray now that as we lay these, our prayers before you, you give us what we need so that we may live it well and in so doing draw closer to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. We will all accept the sacrifice with your hands. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal Feast. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You're indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, said the blessing, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It was the Lord Jesus who taught us to call God our Father, and so we pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Take a moment now to offer those around you a sign of God's peace, and if you are alone, just simply pray for peace at this time.
and we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May bountiful blessings, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.